Hello, my name is James Sashe. I'm an ex-Jehovah's Witness and I was born into Jehovah's Witnesses and I was a witness for 43 years until I was wrongly disfellowshipped on the 2nd of June 2010 by corrupt, wicked and evil elders after confessing to adultery. And uh, Jesus said in the Bible that if you confess your sins, you will be forgiven. I confess to adultery because it's a long story, but I, I didn't want to lose my relationship with Jehovah. I knew when I first got married, my wife, Samantha, told me that if I ever committed adultery, then she would uh, divorce me. So I knew that. But I trusted in Jehovah. And I knew that he would put it right one day. And uh, so I basically got disfellowshipped. And um, I've been on my own for in solitary confinement. I lost all my family and my children. Uh, solitary confinement over 14 years in my bedroom. I rarely go out except to go to my, uh, my best friend Trish. You have only had Trish since uh, my... I got disfellowshipped. Yes, I, I claim to be the Son of God, Christ the Messiah. But many come in the name of... Uh, Jesus said many will come in the, my name claiming to be the Christ or Messiah and will mislead many. I have that scripture on Facebook pumped to me many times. The problem is I don't deceive many. I've got nobody that's following me. There's somebody called... um. Well, uh, a woman called, she calls herself Tabitha Nancy. That's not a real name because she's going to the Kingdom Hall and trying to infiltrate the Kingdom Hall and wake people up. So she um, she doesn't give a real name on Facebook. Um, but um, she's a lovely girl. And um, she actually sent me a text and she said, I believe, I, I believe everything that you say. It's not just about the missing phone, but it's the Bible code. So even she appreciated very wise woman but um yeah this is the i'm just going to relate something it happened this is the birchwood kingdom hall in lincoln uk now 2.9 miles away from this kingdom hall it, well i would my birthday is 29th of april so that's the 29 you have to follow the b 1190 now, in the Bible, there are 1189, 1189 chapters in the Bible. So 1190 would go back to the start of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1. Isn't that amazing? Is that a coincidence or by Jehovah's supernatural design? I think it is. Well, if you go 2.9 miles away from the Kingdom Hall, you come to a hamlet without a church in Skellingthorpe called Jerusalem. And I, I'd i already worked out the Birchwood Kingdom Hall was Jehovah's Temple at Jerusalem. And I was just trying to prove it. And, um, yeah, it's the, it's the third temple, Jehovah's third temple. And, um, yeah, this place in Jerusalem, in uh, Skellingthorpe, is the only place in the... In, in the UK called Jerusalem. There's no other place. It's just one. Just there. 2.9 miles away. And then what I did. I measured. You know the Temple Mount in Israel. Where I measured that. I was trying to get a reference point. But they've got the Golden Gate. Where the entrance is to Jerusalem. And I measured it from there. And it was. I think it was 2.3 miles. I should do it in kilometres really. It was either 2.1 kilometres or 2.3 miles. I can't remember. But a few months ago, I was looking on the map at Jerusalem at Skellingthorpe, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I I, I found it's a gate called the Golden Gates. It's only just a farmhouse, but it's called the Golden Gates at Jerusalem. And they've got the Golden Gate at Jerusalem. So guess what I did? I measured the distance from... Um, the Birchwood Kingdom or Jehovah's Temple, like I did with the Temple Mount to the Golden Gate, and from the Kingdom Hall to the 
um golden gate it was about i can't i'm gonna have to have a look again i think it was about 1.9 miles so it's within the ballpark of the same distance and also there's um on jerusalem road um just before the main road it comes on to it's it's called black lane and i went to the circuit overseer to, to see him once and he was called brother black dear me so this is Jehovah's Temple. And just to prove it, I can't remember the date. I wish I'd wrote it down. But I um, went to the Kingdom Hall. And I was sitting at the back. And um, I went to get my songbook. And I found my letter that was in my briefcase. Which it was a letter from my CPN, Community uh, Psychiatric Nurse, to a plea with the elders Um to not be disfellowship, but that was on my Bible. It, it came out of my bag. Jehovah did a supernatural miracle. And then when I was sitting in the back once, um, there's a there's a brother called Brother King, and I'm the king of God's kingdom. Brother King had a briefcase up against his uh, chair on the outside. It was like lent quite, not 45 degrees, but it lent against it. And then I, was, I just looked, caught my eye, it just went to topple over, like fall down on the floor. And Brother King put his leg out and stopped it. So that was a supernatural miracle. But this is the biggest biblical supernatural miracle I've ever known. I mean, it's on a par with when when Moses parted the Red Sea, if not better, what happened at this kingdom hall. 133 Birchwood Avenue. <clears throat> I... Went to sit at the back because I was disfellowship like you do. After the meeting, I can't remember what I was wanted to see the elders about, but I caught a brother and asked him if I could see the, one of the elders, and he, he, John Dunlop came up to me, which is uh, which you was the presiding overseer at the time, and he says, "Just hang on a minute, I've got to get another elder," which um, which he wanted for a witness, I think. But he got Paul Tucker, which is my brother's name, younger brother's name. So we went into the back room. By the way, I do not lie. I think I've told two lies in my life and felt so guilty. That was back in when I first got married. I've never lied again. I'm always truthful. That's what got me into trouble with the elders because I confessed to adultery. I told them everything that I used to do wrong. Won't go into that now because I'm ashamed of it. But we went to the back room, shut the door. The meeting had finished, obviously. And the blind, they've got uh, tall windows in the back room. The blinds were long and they were down. You couldn't see into the hall, but you could definitely hear a uh, quite loud ch chattering and talking. It wasn't didn't block it out for certainly. It wasn't like faint. It was quite loud. I mean, it was just noticeable. I noticed it. And uh, what I did notice was I was talking to uh, John Dunlop and Paul Tucker for, to be honest, it only seems about three minutes or four minutes, maybe maximum five. Even if it was ten, it wouldn't matter. <clears throat> but I heard the chitter chatter and all of a sudden, and I'm not joking, the hall went quiet. I said, uh, it just it just popped to... Popped up straight the way in my head. I've got an earthquake here now. Japan. That's a sign from Jehovah. The earthquake's just gone off 5.0 in Japan. That's to do with the sign of uh, the 1st of um, January. They had a um, great earthquake in Japan, in Honshu, Japan. And in using the letters in Honshu, Japan, you've got Joshua, which is my son's name. And that earthquake was on JW.org. Uh, David Splain told you how the brothers were safe, but some kingdom halls were damaged. But that's the, if you read uh, Revelation 6, verse 12, it talks about a great earthquake. And then the, the sun turning, uh, turning, um, um, sackcloth black as sackcloth then the moon turned into blood so we've got the earthquake on the first of january which i know was the sign of the great earthquake in revelation six twelve, because the next day there was a 1.7 17 means total victory my 
a friend Trish lived at 17 and it, there was an earthquake the next day in uh, New York. It was about 10 miles away from it was in uh, Queens, uh, Queens, Astoria, which was about t 10, 8 or 10 miles away from the new uh, the world headquarters where Jehovah's Witnesses had it at Brooklyn, New York. So I thought, that's it. That's the sign. And they don't know what it was. Nobody quite knows what it was. It was like a funny noise, shaking. <clears throat> but that's supernatural. And then uh, in Revelation 6, 12, about the sign, the sun turning as, as uh, the sun turning sackcloth, that's actually on jw.org. It's cross-reference to, uh, not Jonah, what is it? What's the one about the sun turning to... Oh, I forget what the scripture... Joel, Joel chapter 231, read it. That's connected to that. And it says before the before the great day of Jehovah. So we've got the earthquake, that's done and dusted. The great... The eclipse, uh, the sun turning sackcloth, was the solar eclipse on the 3rd of... Sorry, the 8th of April, 2024. That went across North America, which is a sign to watch that. Just clipped the path of totality, just clipped the Canada branch, right? So it went in between the world headquarters and the Canada branch. And what's amazing is that this is the whole thing. I claim to be the prophet Elijah, reborn of Malachi 4, 5, verse 5. But the total solar eclipse, there's, I looked in um, on the... Um, where you can find out names of places. There's only two places called Elijah in the world, and they're both in the USA. And guess what? The path of totality passed straight through both Elijahs. And also through Ohio, where where Jehovah's Witnesses in 1992, uh, sorry, in, in 1922 had the... Um, had their special assembly, which was advertised, advertised the king and God's kingdom. It was a famous assembly that Jehovah's Witnesses know about. So the path of totality went straight through there. <clears throat> now, there was a, a total solar eclipse, uh, the great American eclipse on the, was it the 27th of August? 2000, it was in 2017. And that, where it crosses... That one crosses the 8th of April, 24. There's a place called, um, straight in the middle is Rapture. A place called Rapture. Rapture of the Church, Jehovah's Witnesses. And just down from there is a place called Little Egypt. And you remember the Egyptians kept Jehovah, uh, kept uh, the Israelites in captivity. That's Watchtower. They're Egy Egypt and holding Jehovah's Witnesses in captivity. So with the two Elijahs in the path. And then... Um, and what is also amazing, it just defies, this is, proves that I'm the Messiah. You know, the um, in the 2017 solar eclipse, total solar eclipse, the great American eclipse, that came off the coast and made landfall at about 10.48 local time. And guess what city it hit? Lincoln City. I live in Lincoln City, UK. Bum, bum. Ha. There's the proof that I'm Elijah. That was just for me. What's the chances of the solar eclipse in Lincoln City? And I live in Lincoln City with two Elijahs. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, and also, <clears throat> my birthday is on the 29th. So, if you had... Well, it's on the 8th of April, the solar eclipse. So, if you count 8 and 29, my birthday... It comes to 37, right? Sorry, right, I'm doing some money here. Hang on a minute, I'll be with you. Just looking up Isaiah 37. Yeah, so at eight, the 8th, when the solar clip was to my birth to 29, it comes up to 37. Now, the next sign to be done before Watchtower go down is the Revelation uh, six twelve again, where it says the moon shall be turned to blood. It says in that of Joel 2.31.
Now that sign will be fulfilled on the 14th, the 13th and 14th of March 2025, which is also my daughter's month of birth and the solar eclipse happened in my month of birth. And the amazing thing is, if you add 13 and my daughter's birthday is on the 24, you get 37. The same as adding 8 and 29, my birthday. And Isaiah 37 says Jerusalem's deliverance foretold. So what's the chances of that? So this is the definite sign. Now you go, Jehovah's Witnesses, and ask the governing body when Joel 2.31, the sun will be darkened and the moon turned to blood. And also in Revelation 6.12, the earthquake, great earthquake, the sun, the sun turned into sackcloth black and the moon turned to... Go and ask those idiot clowns when that is, is bit... It, they're God's channel of communication. But obviously God hasn't let them know that we're so deep into the far of the end. They haven't got a clue about flipping revelation. I know it all about revelation because Jehovah's revealed it to his servants. And also where's the supernatural evidence? God's leaders in Bible times had supernatural evidence like Moses, Elijah. That's, do you think Jehovah in the last days is not going to do supernatural miracles? That's why he's doing them to me because I'm a leader of God's people. And we'll take over Watch Time the 25th, that's 25th, 3rd of August 2025. Anyway, going to back to this Kingdom Hall, I told you that I was hearing the sound of the brothers talking, uh, talking from the main hall it suddenly went top i said hang on john why is the why is the brother stopped talking uh, i immediately bolted out the door and the elders followed me and guess what everybody had vanished just into thin air i couldn't believe it i said to the elders what's going on they just looked at me stunned i went out into car park the elders followed me and i said where's the cars they didn't say anything. They will quit to get away because um, I don't think they liked it because of what they're doing. If you read um, Ezekiel chapter 8, it talks about the terrible things that are going on in the temple, that are going on in the kingdom hall, which is God's temple at Jerusalem. It talks about, it says, uh, look, look and see what the elders are doing in the darkness. So what are they doing at that kingdom hall? Are they wife swapping? Is the child abuse abuse rings i reckon there is i reckon they're up to no good because when i um went to the kingdom hall i got i got disfellowship for adultery and during my judicial committee david seven is a pious idiot he, he was to, to to want to say something he kept putting his hand up in the meeting oh being humble pious pharisee bunch of pharisees those elders they delivered me to death psychologically and took all my family and friends away from me. I mean, how did they do this when you confess to adultery? They knew I'd had bipolar because they had Bob Gash, who had a daughter with bipolar. That's why they brought him in for some sympathy. I don't know. But why did they do that to me? Jesus said, I want, I want mercy, not sacrifice. He's not interested in all your meeting attendance and going out and field ministry. If you're not going to be merciful, these people are not merciful. So, um, yeah, that's what happened at the Kingdom Hall. So John Dunlop and uh, John Dunlop, John Dunlop and Paul Tucker are my witnesses to this miracle happening. They didn't say anything to me because they could, They were gobsmacked to think. They looked worried. They knew what happened. Jehovah would reveal it to them. But they're hiding gross sexual sins, I'm sure of it. In fact, David Severn, David Seven, there was David Seven. I went to the hall. They actually got me arrested, but I went to the hall. With the, I spoke, spoke to Simon Eshelby and Baz Gilderdale who are on my judicial committee. And at the door, he says, I can't. Talk. He came out, he says, I can't talk to you now. And I just came out with it. I don't know why. It must have been Jehovah. I said, Why have you had sex with my wife, Samantha, ex wife, Samantha? And you know what he did? He like put his arms in the air and 
stamped up and down and went backwards in shock, like over-exaggerated. And then I said it to Baz Gilderdale and he just had a blank look on his face. He didn't, he didn't actually say, oh, James, how could you think about that? He, he, he's had sex with my wife. Because if, if, if you, uh, yeah, and also uh, I did it to Simon Eshelby, the chairman on my judicial committee, said, you've had sex with my wife. And he just goes, oh, ho, 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 ho. it's really strange. But my, my, my wife divorced because of adultery. But if you read Ezekiel chapter six, it talks about uh, my, my wife is the daughter of Zion. I can explain why she is in the Bible. But she, she, it says in Ezekiel chapter six that um, she's an adulterous woman, and it goes into details about uh, being a prostitute and relying on a beauty because she's so beautiful. When I first met her, she still is probably uh, a bit older now, fifty eight, fifty seven, like me. But um, yeah, it talks about a prostitute, like she couldn't get enough of it, being satisfied. Satisfied. Read it. Read it. Uh, Ezekiel. Oh, is it Ezekiel chapter 16? Ezekiel chapter 16. Yeah, Jerusalem is an adulterous wife. It goes on to say in the scripture, like mother, like daughter. That's talking about Iris Gale. And then it goes on to, uh, goes on about, um, it, it says like mother, like daughter. And basically Iris, it says, despised her, Despised her husband and her children, which she does. She despised Jonathan Gale. But if you read Ezekiel chapter 23 as well, that's talking about the two sisters. Now, what is interesting about Ezekiel 16, it says that um, it talks about. Let me just get it. Let me just get it up and I'll tell you what it says. Yeah, it says, um, it says in verse 32, Ezekiel 16, 32, you adulterous wife, you prefer strangers to your own husband. All prostitutes receive gifts, but you give gifts to all your lovers, bribing them to come uh, you from everywhere for your illicit favours. So in your prostitution, you're the opposite of others. No one runs after you for favours. You, you are the very opposite, for you give payment and none given, given to you. Now it says that uh, Jerusalem as a adulterous wife. This isn't talking about figurative Jerusalem. This is talking about an individual. Obviously, <clears throat> I'm just trying to find that scripture. I might have to quote it. Yeah, every verse forty four. Everyone who quotes proverbs will quote quote this proverb about you like mother like daughter you are a true daughter of your mother who despised her husband and her children and you are the true sister of your sisters who despised their husband and their children your mother was a hittite your father was nanonite and there it goes on to say your older sister was samaria who lived to the north of you with their daughters and younger sister well, if this is talking about Samantha, she's the eldest. So I thought she's got an older sister. I reckon I reckon Iris, her mum, Gail, got pregnant at really young age, under age, and they've hid it from everybody. That's because I've got a recording of Iris and I confronted her on it and I said, You've got an older daughter you've got an older daughter, yeah, older than Samantha. She's got a sister, aren't she, Iris? You know what she said? You know this is what she said. I don't know, James. I don't know. I mean, what kind of answers? I've got the recording. That's guiltiness. I'm right about this prophecy. Anyway, that's long enough. The video is 24.15. And I'll put the... When the video's ended, I'm going to put it into the Gematria calculator and see what chapter of the Bible it comes up. It's brilliant. Which proves the miracle at the Kingdom Hall, if it is. Okay, bye for now.